Welcome in English also. Um, we are, are going to um, start a very interesting discussion on uh, how to talk about art. Now please welcome Kaija Kaitavuori who will mo moderate this discussion. Thank you, Jonni. Um, just a little word uh, to uh, kick us off with. Um, the IHME Art Festival has had from the very beginning um, the mission of not only producing artworks, but also creating and encouraging discussion around uh, these works and about contemporary art in general. Um, this is based on the belief that art doesn't live only through the works, but through the uh, encounters and the discussion uh, um, and debates around that art, and hence the program of uh, how to talk about art. So we are talking here about how to talk about art. Um, on the other hand, this is a question that is uh, one of the recurrent kind of eternal questions uh, about art, and occasions like this platform here um, are good opportunities for the uh, practitioners, for the writers themselves, to reflect on the premises of their practice and for us, the audience, to uh, be introduced to the many dimensions of uh, verbalizing art and uh, about talking about and around and with art. Obviously, there's no one right answer to this question, uh, but there are various conditions and purposes of talking and writing about art, and the practitioners have very differing and even conflicting views about it. Um, and this is exactly why we have these uh, discussions and, and this occasion today. Uh, uh, and it's also good for, for us to learn about uh, how the writers think. Um, the structure of this session will be the following. Uh, each speaker has about 30 minutes for the presentation, uh, and then we will gather them all uh, on the stage together and, and start a discussion which will be then opened to the public. Um, our first speaker is Silja Rantanen, who I believe uh, for the Finnish audience doesn't need very much uh, introductions. She's a, an, an artist painter who has a long and important career and is, is quite well known for the uh, Finnish audience. She's uh, had several uh, numerous exhibitions uh, and in different places nationally and internationally. Um, she's produced public works uh, and has been awarded several prizes and medals. And I was happy to read that uh, next autumn there will be a big retrospective exhibition opening in the Sara Hilden Art Museum in, in Tampere. At, uh, the, at present, she's also um, the professor of painting at the Academy of Fine Arts here in Helsinki. She is also an active and influential participant in cultural discussions uh, in many ways, bringing often quite sharp observations and, and knowledgeable and insightful views into the uh, debate. As an artist, uh, she seems to be a painter who also reflects on painting, both in the painting itself as well as verbally in writing. And today, she's going to ask whether describing art makes sense and what happens if art criticism uh, skips description and what, what is the worth of describing. So please welcome Celia. Does this work? <laughs> Does uh, describing make sense? Uh, talking about art is governed by similar laws as talking in general. You should talk clearly. Flattery brings you nowhere. It's no use trying to appear as cleverer than you are. A little less brilliant talk can reach the listener as well, if only the feeling is sincere. Most of what I say is meaningless, but I say it just to reach you, Julia. Uh, in the invitation, there was a reference to professionals addressing target audiences. Uh, that is only one and a very specific dimension of talking about art. 
One should talk about art to everybody and in everyday language. The critique addressed to art talk by the uh, great audience is legitimate. We speak in a complicated manner. We use a cryptic language as if we didn't wish that people would understand what we say, or as we would wish that only a limited group of specialists would understand what we talk and write. Most of what I say is meaningless, and I say it not to reach you, Julia. On the other hand, we who are professionally employed in the art world try to raise the status of art in the eyes of financiers and politicians. In this case, the communication does actually have a function, as the invitation to this discussion indicated. Communication with a task or a mission is no more open, stuttering, or probing as the studying and explaining of things naturally tends to be. Instead, it approaches manipulation. This was a catastrophe uh, scenario concerning the degradation of communication on a general level. In spite of what I said, the manipulativeness of language is in no way a phenomenon which would only be tied to art talk of today. Convincing other people has been a central function of language in the past as well as today. Convincing other people, um, uh, as an example, the capacity to convince another person through speech is one of the six or so criteria in language exams for state officials in Finland. But it seems that in today's art world, the convincing function of language has taken over. It shows, for instance, in the way artistic groups communicate their identification and their loyalty to the group with a specialized jargon. Our theoretical fashion slogans gain ground with an amazing speed. They act like passwords to a secret society or to a congregation. James Elkins broke somewhat ironically a recent one-liner during his latest lecture in Helsinki. Uh, the haptic is the optic of today. The door opens, you belong to us. Consensus, which is in social life is a useful device, can be destructive in the area of language. Thinking suffers if the thinkers don't consider how things really are, but try to stick to the customary expressions in each situation. Describing makes sense. When artists speak of art today, they, we, speak and write of meanings. The amount of describing has diminished as well in our talk as in the critique in newspapers. What is the reason for this? Is it a result of the tendencies in the so-called artistic research? In an international symposium of artistic research in Murcia, Spain, last December, the researcher Zarat Maharaj uh, remarked that the time of description in art historical and theoretical studies was over. His remark bothers me. Besides the art historical and art theoretical research, the universities of art are organized today according to levels in such a way that in the bachelor studies the focus lies in what is to be seen in a piece of art, and in the master studies the stress is in what it means. The artistic research, which is a continuation of this system, carries the same tendency a bit further. In artistic research, the main focus is on the conceptual goal of the artistic process, and uh, this is supposed to be consciously recognized by the artist. Description is scarce or non-existent. How does this structure look like from the point of view of the spectator? And every artist is a spectator as well. Spectatorship is an artistic method. Speak, uh, skipping over the description in interpretation of art, artworks is unnatural. Meanings come through in the forms of the artworks. 
even an untrained spectator can perceive in a piece in a piece of art, things which the artist didn't include in it intentionally. The situation is a deeply psychological one. Just as in associative speech, the artist reveals unconscious things, including uh, ones she or he wouldn't wish to reveal. A piece of art is an associative creation. The artist creates both intended information and information that wasn't intended. It would be naive to deny this phenomenon. The dominance of explaining the meanings on the behalf of the description uh, refers to some kind of control neurosis. What do I mean by description? In describing the genre of the, pe uh, the, genre of the piece of art is revealed. When an artist writes analytically about a piece of hers, his, she or he avoids pointing out similarities between them and other pieces of art from the recent art history. When the spectator looks at the same pieces, she or he recognizes the said similarities because for a spectator they are not a taboo. For scientists, the word to describe me, seems to mean something completely different than the thing I am trying to pinpoint here. I assume that when the scientists mention the art of describing, they refer to giving a yet more complete simulation or an as truthful reproduction of reality as possible, something resembling a graphical curve like fever curve. But uh, there exists another type of describing, which seems more relevant from the artistic point of view. It is important to analyze the composition of the pieces of art, but description can carry more meaning than that. Descriptions can rend important aspects communicable by uh, aspects of artworks by simply naming what goes on in a piece of art. The A4s distributed at the film archives before the film make an example of such descriptions. Frottage was a technique used by Max Ernst and uh, this is, however, not by Max Ernst, but by myself from my diary. Frottage was a technique used by Max Ernst and other surrealists and by many other artists as well. In a way, it is a method for writing reality down in pictorial form. It resembles a play with a quasi-scientific method. The reality, so it seems, is duplicated, but uh, in the end, the object in question doesn't really get duplicated at all. Nothing happens at all, actually. The complete charm of the game is in the desperate try. Frottage is a good example of the difference between the scientific concept of describing and the artistic concept of it. Uh, in fiction, meanings are dealt with through descriptions. The way authors describe things would suit artists better as an ideal than the scientists' ways. It would be more generous towards the spectators if the artists would just select and name freely some things they see in their own pieces, instead of making their self-analysis so definitive. 